John Robson believes more technical college pre-apprenticeship courses should be made available to avoid a shortage of tradesmen in the future. The number of apprenticeships has dropped dramatically in this industry. Why is that? Well, I think it's because the, the companies haven't got the volume of work. There's been a number of companies gone out of business. A number of had to reduce their numbers dramatically over the last six months. And, uh, you know, we've done a survey just recently uh, of 105 of our member companies. Uh, two years ago, at 1981, they indentured uh, over 900 apprentices. This year, those same 105 companies are only putting on 138 apprentices, and that's a dramatic drop, and we're very concerned about it. What does the future hold for the metal engineering industry? I think overall it's, it's, it will recover, but we certainly need uh, projects put into the region where they're based uh, on work that will help the metal engineering industry. At the moment there's a lot of work coming into the region, but unfortunately the port proportion for the metal engineering is very small and there's not enough work for the companies that are here. And I think that uh, you know we've got companies that have got a lot of skills in the region and we certainly can't afford to lose any more of those companies. in the Supreme Office Supplies warehouse in Griffiths Road, Lambton, was noticed by a security guard shortly before 7 o'clock last night. Five fire stations responded to the call, but it was more than an hour before they were able to contain the blaze. Flames engulfed the entire warehouse, which was filled with paper, inks and other stationery. Firemen and scientific police were on the site early this morning, sifting through rubble in an effort to determine the cause of the blaze. So far, the investigations have failed to turn up any clues. Damage has been estimated at $500,000. The company, Supreme Office Supplies, plans to continue operating from temporary premises near the burnt-out warehouse. great lengths to put on the show for the screen of the video. Even light rain couldn't keep the clouds away last night. There are plenty of giant fires, cardboard cutouts. Not all carry the Christmas message. There are some of your favourite characters, including Fred Flintstone. Not all the attractions are steady displays. Mickey Mouse was in Cairo last night, taking around with the girls and boys. In the this time, the boys are seen in the safety of God's shoulders. No way this Christmas come alive to hear that it does here. And it's obvious the residents enjoy it much as much as the visitors. title will be sailed at Spears Point and will provide some of the fastest racing seen on the lake over the holidays. The A-Class Cat is an 18-foot boat sailed by just one person and they get up and go in a breeze. The fleet will include all the boats that represented Australia in last year's World Championships in Italy. Competing boats will come from Townsville in the north right down south to the bottom part of Victoria. Greg Goodall from the south holds the title at present and will be hard to beat as will a strong Queensland outfit headed by twice winner Brian Hooper and Ken Austin, another past champion. The home state team is also a strong one, with Peter Backhouse, who plays sixth in the world, Martin Bunch, Jay Boo, together with local sailors Robert Tiedman and David Hughes.
Ambulance and police, rescue squad and the Central Coast Rescue Service rushed to where two cars had collided head on. Police say the northbound Toyota Crown with three passengers crossed double yellow lines on the new road widening section. It hit a Falcon with seven passengers, including four children. Jaws of life were used to free one elderly woman who was trapped under the dash of the Toyota. The West Pack Rescue helicopter was called in and took her to Royal Newcastle Hospital in a stable condition with internal injuries. Eight other people had minor injuries and were taken to Belmont Hospital for treatment. Central Coast second fatality for the Christmas break happened at the corner of Werribee Street and Budgewoy Road, Noraville, at about 6 o'clock last night. Police say a minibus carrying 15 senior citizens to a bingo game in Coopley collided head-on with the maroon van, travelling in the opposite direction. The driver of the van, 52-year-old Fifth of Danio, Kalani Vale, died in the smash. Fifteen people were taken to hospital, but all are reported to be in a stable condition. Meanwhile, police, ambulance and hospital services on the Central Coast have been kept extremely busy today with the strength of action. This smash opposite the entrance to the Lake Munmora power station happened at about 11.30 this morning. I was on that day to drive with the orange jets and slammed on the brakes to avoid hitting a car turning into traffic. Apparently the brakes locked and the car skidded into the path of an oncoming brown fire. Say children in one car weren't wearing seatbelts. Six people were taken to hospital and all are reported to be uh, out of danger. The traffic into Swansea has been heavy all day, with cars banked up as far south as the Catherine Hill Bay turn-off. The increased volume of traffic now able to bypass that former bottleneck of Wyong are now faced with a similar situation in Swansea, with the major culprit being the traffic lights in the shopping centre. Apart from the Swansea problem, which the Federal Minister for Transport, Mr Peter Morris, says will be rectified with the completion of the Newcastle bypass. All other trucks in the area is reported to be moved in the as holiday makers make their way home. The dispute at Bayswater threatened to spread to all open-cut mines in the Upper Hunter. The Minister for Mineral Resources, Mr Kevin Stewart, stepped in late last week to mediate. The Bayswater Colliery says the bonus scheme was dropped to save jobs at the mine. The FEDFA, in reaction, decided not to handle coal at open-cut mines over the holidays unless a solution was found. A number of proposals have been thrashed out, but will not be made public until the men meet to discuss them. Meantime, the dispute is not affecting coal loading in the port. Seven trains from Hexham, Liddell, Wharfworth, Drayton and Gunnedah mines are expected tomorrow at the Port Waratah loader. Three ships are now loading. The Global Hope and the Chikuho Maru at the channel loader and the Bello Mondo at basin loader. One collier left a few days early yesterday after record loading continued over the Christmas break.
Little Amy Drennan made an early entry to the new year at Belmont Hospital. She was the first baby born in the region yesterday. Like most people, she spent the day sleeping after a big night. Amy was a week early, but her mother, Lily, from Gorakin, didn't mind spending New Year's Eve in the labour ward. The Drennans had waited 10 years for their first baby. An hour after Amy was born, baby Ross Newman came into the world at Western Suburbs Hospital. Mrs. Isaac Newman didn't make any plans for New Year's Eve because Ross was one and a half weeks late. The Western Suburbs Hospital had a very busy start to 1984. Another boy was born at 5 o'clock, then another at 8.40 a.m., and a girl 30 minutes later. Nursing staff thought the rush was over when another boy, Garrett, arrived from the labour ward. With five new arrivals to contend with, it was quite a day in maternity. Finally, a baby was also born at the Martyr early yesterday morning, adding up to something of a baby boom in Newcastle. and Manning River Motors and Phil Linfield. With the scoring allowing for the dropping of the worst heat, Goodry finished with three first placings and two seconds, for six points overall. In second was twice winner of the title, McNortham of Taree, in Taree Blinds and Awnings with 24 points. In third place was the other Taree boat, Manning River Motors and Phil Linfield, just behind his club mate, with 24.4 points. Aurora may not have been here long, but it appears the crew has established some lasting ties with Newcastle. Families who extended their hospitality to the visiting sailors came to wave goodbye. Oh, and there was plenty of curious girls. For some, the parting was too much. To go. <laughs> HMS Aurora, part of the task force headed by the Invincible, is bound for a refuelling stop in Cairns and then through the barrier reef. Commander Look, Bishop said it, Newcastle's uh, response to the ship's visit was overwhelming. We've had an absolutely marvellous time. Uh, people have been very generous, very kind to the ship's company and we've thoroughly enjoyed ourselves on the beaches, in the Hunter Valley, in the town. People have come down to the ship and been very generous with their hospitality and in every way it's been a marvellous place for us. with regulars Ian Davies, the World Cup star, who was certain of an Olympic bird. And Mike Johnson, a highly talented under-20 national representative, who was destined for the very top. Ian Rebillion, a tough, non-stop guard, who must also be on the fringe of higher honours. Another newcomer is Jeff Patterson, something of an unknown, who was on the comeback trail after an under-20 representative of the year. 205-centimetre Jerry Denard has the big shoes of former star George Morrow this year. That's what I understand. I was, uh, when I received some uh, brochures about the team, uh, I read that he averaged uh, pretty close to 16 boards a game. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, I guess, one of my main objectives, you know, is to uh, come in and take over the rebounding position more, more than uh, anything else right now. The other American, Terry Youngbauer, has a record college career behind him and is determined to do well. Um, well, I played uh, high school basketball in Sussex, Wisconsin, which is uh, a town just outside of Milwaukee. 
Um, and then I went on to Drake University in uh, Iowa. I believe your record at Drake's pretty outstanding. Yeah, I, I did pretty well there and looking to help out here as best I can. What do you know of Newcastle basketball? Well, to be honest with you, not a lot. You know, I'm just coming into this uh, with a pretty open mind and uh, I'm just here to you know, do the best I can and hopefully I'll help out. The mild conditions have led to abundant growth and three or four more weeks of sunshine without excessive heat would be ideal. The president of the Hunter Valley Vineyard Association, Mr Jay Tunnock, summed up the situation. There hasn't been a great deal of hot weather, which means the, uh, the vines have uh, grown nicely. Uh, they're now at the stage where the fruit is just starting to ripen and uh, the three inches of rain we've had in the last few days has uh, more or less ensured that everything looks good at this stage. Now, the path ahead from here is going to be largely dependent on the weather. If we get a lot of rain, that will uh, end up being detrimental to us. Uh, if it goes along in uh, sort of warm days and cool nights, that would be absolutely ideal. Uh, if it turns very hot, uh, like it did uh, this time last year, well, we could look at uh, having uh, vintage starting uh, around about the long weekend. As uh, the situation is at the present time, we'd be looking to start uh, in the first few days of February. But uh, the quality of the fruit that's there now, uh, provided we don't get any too many hiccups in the meantime, uh, the growing season has been ideal and we can be assured of top quality fruit. The previous couple of years have been hard on local vineyards. The drought led to lower yields, and the recession caused the big national companies to spark a round of savage <laughs> <laughs> With government policy and uncertainty and uh, discounting and so forth, it's had its uh, toll on the hunter. But uh, I think 1984 is going to sort all that out. And uh, I think certainly with an increased crop, which is going to give us larger volumes in which to be able to market and uh, get a return on, is going to give us a, a much better future. Another hopeful sign, according to boutique winemaker Murray Grumpton, and that, that's is it. Oh, very well, thanks very much, Murray. Yeah, very nice. But what I really, uh, you know, want to talk to you about is just how... All our trade, or most of it, is um, at the winery. And that's, from the public's point of view, those interested in top wines, uh, is the great benefit because it's a lot of fun and interest to actually come to a winery and speak to somebody who actually makes the wine that can comment intelligently on what you're doing and that's what we all do and we um, now have the facilities here to cater for it. <laughs>